that I think Spider-Man 2 is going to be one of the coolest games you'll ever play. And right now, my my tier list, you know, for greatest superhero games of all time, obviously, Spider-Man and Miles Morales is up there. Arkham Knight, you know, the mechanics of that. Um, Spider-Man 2 blew that out of the water for me in terms of traversal, in terms of being able to web swing, to, to wing glide, and to do all of that and feel so fluid in your movements. It is coming for the title of greatest superhero game of all time. And I welcome that. Hello and welcome to the movie podcast. My name is Daniel and this is our hands-on impressions of Spider-Man 2 on PS5. Joining alongside me swinging through these glorious impressions of Spider-Man 2 are Shabazz. Yo, 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 yo. It looks like I'm doing gang signs, but they're actually web hands that I'm doing. I'm like... They are web hands. Now you sound like a snake. You know what voice you're going to be hearing today a lot. <laughs> God, just do it. You start of us off right away. Shay, last Spider-Man. Wow. Is it because I'm brown? Is that why? Uh, well, no. well that's, you said it. Because <laughs> Wait, the voice that I was going to do. Say it, because you <laughs> said it for I, me. I, I, damn. I mean, I put myself in that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, there's not that many tall buildings in Pakistan for me to really be swinging uh, between. Um, and it's there's... True. Too much crime happening there, so I don't know if I'll have time to save everybody. <laughs> like I'll, I'll miss a lot of stuff. There's a lot to unpack in that, but also joining us, swinging through, uh, is Anthony. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm cappuccino Spider-Man. I'm espresso Spider-Man. I just oh, you're boring relax. Spider-Man. Okay, you're watching the crime happen as you yeah. just sip away. Yeah. Oh, is that a bank robbery? Your... I'll get to this. it in a bit. I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm over here like venom. And then, oh, there it is. There it is. Less there than is. two minutes to get to it. Maybe even less uh, than a minute. Uh, what a show we have planned for you today. Uh, I had the honor of going to Los Angeles to get my grubby little web hands on Spider-Man 2 PS5. Uh, thank you to Sony. Thank you to PlayStation. Thank you to Insomniac for inviting us out to do it. Uh, there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to cover uh our hands-on impressions today are going to cover my time with the game i'm going to talk about the event itself because there was a whole event going on for all things spider-man 2 um and then of course we'll talk about the game and then we have a lot of questions i know you guys have questions as well so if you're watching this uh you're going to see a lot of b-roll a lot of, of images and videos from the event itself if you're listening to this on podcast feeds please you know Keep listening. Listen to us there. But also, go check out the YouTube video of this episode because there is so much we're going to be talking about. And I'm going to be throwing up videos and images like right now. Like right now, <laughs> I'm showing you. I'm going to be throwing up. I'm like, why? No, no, no. I'm showing you well? a video right now that you may <laughs> yeah. have never seen before. And you just got to believe that I'm doing that because, you know, I'm telling you that we are. But there's, there's so much to talk about. Spider-Man 2 is going to be releasing on October 20th. And I cannot believe that... Uh, we're talking about this game before it's out. This is a, a, a dream come true. And just to take a, a second for myself, like this is something that like, I think I've grown up dreaming of doing and growing up reading previews on, you know, an IGN on wherever I, I got my gaming content growing up and, you know, to be there and to re- represent the movie podcast and to have some people recognize our name, to have our name printed out on the name tag that said like, you know, the movie podcast, Spider-Man two, it's like, that's a huge deal, and I just want to say thank you again to PlayStation Canada for you know bringing us out there. We went with a great team of Canadian media and content creators, and it was just uh, it was really really cool to you know to rep the movie podcast there because uh, I felt your your guys' presence there with me. I really did. Thank you. Yes, we were yeah. sp- Spider Man ghosts. Spider ghosts. Spider ghosts. <laughs> we were holding we were holding down Tiff right now that's what we were doing yeah we were holding yeah. it down you guys were holding down tiff like there there's like and that's the thing like there is there was so much going on this week on the movie podcast we had tiff going on we have interviews happening shay was killing it with some in-person interviews all of which will be releasing very soon anthony was editing so much stuff and then as i'm boarding the plane which dakota johnson who's going to be in madam web which is again funny coincidence was boarding the plane with her I got a notification on my phone and I looked down. I'm like, oh, my God, the movie podcast is an official publication on Rotten Tomatoes. And like, Yay! what a crazy week that we've been having already. And and then the L.A. trip playing Spider-Man, it was just like the icing of the cake and all of it. But before we get to all of the fun Spider-Man stuff today, uh, this is the movie podcast. We love what we're doing here. We have brand new episodes all throughout the week. We have interviews, reviews previews on games uh and all the latest movies and series we have some great interviews coming up 
including uh, my sit-down discussion with Jacinda Chu, who is the Senior Art Director at Insomniac. She's been there for over 20 years. She's worked on pretty much every project that they've released over the last two decades, and we got to really get into it with Spider-Man 2. Um, and we have uh, some, you know, some exclusive news in that interview. So it is live now on YouTube. It is live now on Podcast Feed. So make sure you check out both of those episodes because there is so much Spider-Man content. We couldn't keep it in just one episode. So we're spreading it out over two episodes. So we have today, hands-on impressions, gameplay, talking about everything. And then we have our interview with Jacinda, which is going to be out. So you could catch all of that. And then if you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe. We have a, an incredible community on Discord that you want to be part of. So join below. Show notes below will have everything you need to know, including all of our socials to follow us there. We have some incredible videos coming out. So if you like little bite-sized you know, chunks of Spider-Man, that's weird to say, uh, go check that out because there's, uh, there's a lot of incredible information in that. But without further ado, Spider-Man 2 on PS5. Uh, before I get into anything, do you guys have any questions about anything that I could kind of kick things off with? Is the game terrible? <laughs> <laughs> well, that one I can't answer. Um, no, it is not. The game... Good. So so basically, this, this is kind of how it all went down. We get to LA, uh, got there in the evening went through the event which was in a space in in downtown los angeles and we get into this giant's elevator that kind of is going to bring us up to the top floor and the elevator was going really slow so everyone was like oh they're they're really building up the anticipation of what this is going to be um and then it turns out it just because there was way too many people on the elevator so half of us had to get off i was about to say right? like, can you control elevator speeds in an no, elevator? I, I didn't know i didn't know if you could or not but clearly there was just way too many people on this elevator so we kind of go all the way through the top and you enter this room and it's it's it looks like oscorp so there's this giant you know uh I guess, glass box that has the symbiote in it. And for those of you who've played Spider-Man on PS4, obviously, clearly, there's going to be spoilers for the first game and for Miles Morales. So if you have not played them, I don't know why you, you've been listening to a uh, hands-on impression episode for so long, but there'll be spoilers for the first game and for Miles Morales. Um, you see, like, where Harry Osborn has, like, this giant, you know, glass box with a symbiote in it. And then we kind of all sat around. And we, you know, Brian Intahar came out, who was the game's director, and he just welcomed us all there. And there was a lot of press in the room, a lot of media, a lot of people from, you know, the IGNs, the kind of funny, everyone, everyone was there. So we sit down and they play us a trailer, which is the same trailer that is going to be shown tonight or, you know, that is out now in the PlayStation State of Play. So we got to see, you know, the preview of that a little early. Uh, and this trailer will blow you away because there is a lot of costumes, a lot of suits that are shown in this trailer. There's a lot of new mechanics shown in this trailer. So we're going to already, you listening to this, you will, will have seen that trailer and your mind is probably going to be blown at that point. Anyway, after we were done in that room, Brian was giving us a speech. Um, there was a question, and I know we're going to get to questions later on, about what version of the game this was. The build that we played was about six weeks old. So is a, they've had a lot of work on the game since. It is a work in progress, as Brian Intahar said. So, okay, like keeping that in mind. Um, off the top, in my experience, I didn't run into many bugs in the game, except, you know, the Spider-Man themselves. Come on. hey -o. Uh, But it was just a, a six-week-old build, so that kind of right off the top, I just want to give that get that out there we also played in fidelity mode so that was about 30 frames per second there were settings but i could not change anything to turn on like uh you know to turn on you know performance mode or performance rt mode which at least gives us 60 frames per second um but what was really cool about the event is that they had it set up like coney island like the amusement park so there were different games that we could play again i'm going to throw footage on screen um i want a poster by like you know, I don't know what the game's called, but you take the hammer and you hit it and you have to hit the bell. So like I want to... Like the uh, strength challenge one? Yeah, the strength challenge one. And uh, there was also the one where you like shoot like the water from one of the like the guns and then you have to... It blows up a balloon and it pops, which was so loud and scared the shit out of everybody every single time that they went off because it was always four people playing and it was like pop, 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 pop. It literally sounded like bullets. Was the balloon uh, Spider-Man's face as you were filling it up or no? No, it was just a normal balloon, but I, oh. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a balloon blow up to that size. Like, they were going, like, 
massive. And then they finally popped and it scared the hell out of everybody every single time. Um, but what was really cool in the, the setup was like the amusement park. And then on the walls, there's these giant, you know, pictures of, um, you know, frames from the game. So there was like screenshots from the game and moments from the game that you'll see. So uh, there was one, obviously a giant one of Venom of Harry and Norman Osborn of Peter. There was, there was a lot kind of spread out a lot of art there. And then there was also room set up. So there was Dr. Connor's lab, which had like a bunch of different lizards in it. Uh, you had his lab coat because obviously, you know, he has to have his lab coat. Uh, there was also just a bunch of lab equipment and the, there was like a bunch of fog. So it was really cool seeing that. Uh, later on in the, in the, down the hall, there was like a very old looking, like antique looking room, which was Craven's room. Um, and I just kept thinking of Marvin's room, like Drake, the Drake song. Um, but that's where he, you know, had his throne. He had a bunch of like animal heads on the wall. And what was really cool is throughout the, I guess the, the exhibit or the room, there is these different spider bots. So they just look like spider. They look like just like little spiders that you collect. And those are actually collectibles in the game. You'll be collecting these little spider bots throughout. And some of them, you know, will be based on different characters and this is what's really interesting is that it feels like it's opening up the multiverse into the Spider-Man 2 world because some of them will look like it's across the Spider-Verse or into the Spider-Verse where it's like breaking the dimension. And you, as you collect them, you would get different um, characters. It would be like different characters that the, the Spider-Bots would be. And then uh, as you collect more of them, like you Genki starts to inc uh, like decode them and it's like, Oh, someone's calling, but it looks like they're miles away. So in my head, I'm like, is this like Miguel O'Hara? Is this Spider-Man 2099? Like, are they trying to connect this into across the Spider-Verse somehow? So there was a lot uh, that I'm sure that everyone who was there, cause there's going to be a lot of coverage of this game. will have different footage like, or I guess different experience of finding different ones or going to different moments because the whole map was open to us. So this time we get Manhattan, we get Brooklyn, uh, we get Queens. So the map is almost twice the size of what we've played so far. Before I continue on, any questions from you guys so far? Because I know I've been talking a long time. How, how would you say, like, we, we're dealing with the game right now. We've had the first Spider-Man game. We've had the Miles Morales game. How did you find the balance of both characters? Like, did you find it easy to kind of switch between them? Um, fast travel, just some of those things off the top of my head. I know we have some write-in questions as well, which we will get to. Uh, but those are just some of the ones that are kind of off the top of my head. Yeah, so fast travel, yeah, you could switch between Peter and Miles at any time. Um, in the demo that we were playing, the game will naturally switch between them. But you can't swap between them. Fast travel was not enabled for our demo. But what you will see in the video that is being released today or that is out now from the state of play is that what's really cool is that you could just open up a spot of the map, click on it, and you will literally just zoom into the map. It, it looks almost like almost like GTA 5. It will just zoom right into that exact block and you will, you'll be there. And there's different like animations every time or different moments so if you remember back in gta 5 um you know whenever you swap between characters those characters would be doing different things right so like oh trevor is you know in a dress and he's like assaulting someone or you know michael is with his family or you know like or uh, franklin is you know just out and about walking the street so there's different um there's different things that each spider-man is doing uh one of the ones that everyone was freaking out at in the video is that we switched to peter and you see him doing like stomach crunches. And as the camera pulls out, you realize that he's doing stomach crunches on the side of a building. And everyone's just like, oh my God, that's so cool. Um, and every time you switch between them, it's different, right? And sometimes you'll be, uh, you'll go do a, a fight a crime and, you know, Miles is there already doing it. So you could jump in and help them out. Um, or sometimes you'll just swing in, they'll high five each other. And then you go on in your way and you're just... You know, you're just now you're Peter or now you're Miles. So it's really, really fast to switch. Um, you asked a question about, you know, how do Peter and Miles feel? Was that was that a yeah, like it, like do you find that it's kind of balanced? I know that in, in the gameplay that you were playing, it was, I guess, almost simulated that you were kind of switching between them. Like there wasn't like the natural progression of that. But did you feel like there was a balance when you were playing the story? Yeah, so yeah, definitely a balance. So we played, we got about two hours to play. And I and I also want to preface this by saying this is about nine months after Miles Morales. 
So we're nine months later from the story that we've just, so we just finished with Miles Morales back in 2020 already. I also can't believe the first game's already five years old, but yeah. Um, this is nine months after Miles Morales. Uh, Miles is graduating or has graduated high school. So now he's just kind of out in the world trying to find his place in the world. Um, but yeah, it was a nice balance because you'd have missions as Peter, you'd be doing your thing and then cutscene would happen and then we'd kind of naturally go over to miles and it was really nice that way our demo was a few hours in to the main story as well i think my level was like i think i was like level 20 or something like that so the, we were a, a, a I, I can't even put a number on it, but we were definitely a little ways into it um which was nice so they there was a natural progression between them i had a bunch of abilities already unlocked for us which i know we're going to be talking about that in the menus very soon but yeah it was a nice balance and What's amazing with Spider-Man 2 is that this is not Peter's game that features Miles. This is Peter Parker and Miles Morales. This is both of their games. So they are you know, equal in this story. Um, and right in the demo, as the demo starts, uh, again, I'm going to throw the B-roll up right now. It literally starts with you know Peter going to this church um, as Spider-Man to get the serum for Dr. Connors that Craven has. And Craven is very, very menacing and very, very intimidating already. And he kind of discovers that like Peter or Spider-Man's weakness, you know, to the giant bell that's in the church, again, very reminiscent to Spider-Man 3, that the symbiote doesn't like the sounds of the vibrations and the in the pitches of that. So Craven like notices that like, oh, like I have a weak point to take down this prey. Um, so that was like, that was like a big, um, a big kind of story point there. And then right from there, you're kind of meeting up with Harry and Harry is just kind of going about his day. And, you know, you're working on this collider at Oscorp. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's interesting because in the demo, you know, like Harry knows that Peter is Spider-Man. So that there, there's an interesting dynamic there to these characters. Um, Cause like literally Peter will just swing right in and I'm like, Oh, Peter's swinging in and he's just going to quickly change. It's like, no, like Harry knows that Peter Spider-Man and there's like this interesting dynamic that changes because I think one of the fears I had with this game was that it was going to be like uh, Spider-Man, more Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2, but it's not like, and the stories that we know, we really don't know. Like they're really changing things going forward, which I really, really liked. Um, there is so much customization in this game and it's it was a little overwhelming because I think all of us here have been so used to the menus of Spider-Man for the last five years where we know exactly where everything is. So there's different, you know, headings on the top. So we have map, suit tech, sorry, map, suits, which we'll talk about in a second, suit tech, gadgets, skills, abilities, collections, and then the move list. So there's so much customization, so many abilities to unlock, and the ability, the skill tree is really cool because you could unlock things for Peter, and then there'll be another one that's kind of merged with Peter and Miles. Something that I found interesting of what you just said is one of the things that I remember when I finished, we, we all have platinum the game, and uh, I was always like, okay, I want to I, I want to keep playing this game and swinging around, but I want a little bit extra incentive. And for me, that was the benchmarks. And I noticed that you mm -hmm. didn't mention benchmarks at all. So I wonder if that's just completely gone, if they didn't find people were really caring about that, or if it's just in your build of the game that wasn't available because maybe it led to spoilers or who knows what it could have done but i'm curious if that's going to be something there it could be yeah so i didn't there was no benchmarks heading it could have been like i'll be honest with you it could have been in a different settings category just from when i was playing i did not see it as i was exploring the menu so maybe it could be something that's you know either added or shown or unlocked later uh but from what i've seen it's not there um, but yeah, there's abilities that you will, you know, put into Peter. And then at one point there'll be like two abilities that will give it to Peter and to miles, which is really nice. Um, and let me tell you, when you open up the map, you can now fast travel to any point on the map. Like I was saying, so you're not just going to the subway stations. You could just open up the map, choose wherever you are and be like, that's where I want to go. And it's like PS five. Yeah. You're dropped right in. I, you know, what's funny that game is so fun to play the first one. I have only ever used fast travel once just to see the animation, just to say yeah. I did it. But I never fast travel because, and especially now with this one, we have the wingsuit and everything, which I know you're going to get to. Uh, why would anyone ever want to fast travel? It's just like, oh my God, <laughs> I want to get somewhere. I'm going to enjoy right. the hell out of getting there. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. 
the map is almost twice as big. So there may be points that you may just want to swing in. And also, it just kind of looks really cool, just like in the first game, like getting on the subway. I mean, there's no loading on the PS5, like the remastered version. So they remember they added the option to turn that on where you could actually see the subway ride or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's very, very fast. It's 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 crazy how fast it is. Uh, but you mentioned Web Wings. And my God, if there was ever a game that got flying right, I can't believe it's Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man 2. Because literally, you'll, you'll just be swinging. And the swing already is faster than the first game. Uh, there was a slingshot. So there's these little points where you could literally just put two uh, uh, webs out and you go flying and it will just shoot you across the city. Um, but then you just hold triangle and you pull out your web wings and it goes, and like you just like, it makes a little like sound and you're just Sorry, gliding. One more time. And then, one more time. It okay. goes like that. Uh, and it, you could literally just use like the right stick to kind of go up and down and you're just flying through the city and it feels incredible. Like I, right after the demo, I'm like, man, if Insomniac ever wanted to make a Superman game, they got it. They 100% know what to do. Um, and uh, you kind of gain momentum by going up and down. If you want to put them away, you just press triangle and they go. And then you just continue swinging. So like you could literally go glide, swing, wings out, wings back in. Like the amount of traversal uh, is going to be crazy of what you could do. And already this is a game that we've spent hours just swinging through the city. And this is going to be even more fun because just gliding around was just so cathartic and so therapeutic. I'm like, I don't, I honestly, and I'm not just saying this, I don't know what else, what other game is going to take me away from Spider-Man two. when it comes out just because even after all the story is done, the amount of just the, the feeling that of just swinging and feeling like you're Spider-Man there. I said it, you feel more than ever. Like you are Spider-Man, you are Peter, you are miles. Like you feel that. And it's so damn cool. The suits in this game are amazing. So we started off, I was wearing the black symbiote suit, which is like the main, you know, suit for this game. And I, I mentioned this to Jacinda in our interview where I said, you know, Brian back in the day, Brian Intahar said that they didn't want to give a black suit with the white, uh, with the, like a black suit with the white spider in the first game, because that suit needs to mean something. There's a history behind that suit. So this time they're doing it. And I love that there's like, you know, the little, is it tandrels or thandrels? Like, Thandrils, like what Legolas, Legolas' dad. T what are they called? Tandrils? Those little, uh, like, blah, 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 things? Oh, like, Someone's yeah. gonna, like tentacles almost? Yeah. yeah, almost like tentacles. But, like, it's there was a word for it. But, like, the, like you see that. It's like a living organism on the suit, which looks really cool. But there's also the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3 suit that you could have the black Tobey Maguire suit. And it looks so cool good guys it looks so so good what about the the todd mcfarlane original black venom suit so i did not see that in my demo uh jacinda said that there's you know three different categories for uh what they choose for suits so uh there's obviously the original insomniac ones there's the comic book inspirations there's the mcu ones um and there's uh, an, uh another category again go watch that interview go listen to what we said because we talk all about it but i did not see the todd mcfarlane one i can't imagine a world where it is not in this game because how could it not uh jacinda also dropped that you know you know the spider-man noir suit was most likely going to be in the game because she said, like, you know, we, you know, we, the, she, she, I, I mean, think she I, I said think we could confirm I think that, she right? She said it's in the game. Yeah. I, I like, I, I feel like that's something that was said that it's definitively in the game. So again, go watch our interview because there's now a lot of not. great news she's in that. Removing. Now it's not. <laughs> she's, she's no, what did Daniel right say? Now, like, delete no, suit. I'm removing this code. No. It's that easy, by the way. Just delete code. <laughs> Um, but there's some incredible suits and not only just suits, uh, there's about five suits for each, uh, Spider-Man in this demo. There's going to be tons. When you click on a suit, you could unlock customizations for them. So you have the advanced suit, which is the basic, you know, the red the insomniac, uh, suit with the big white spider. You go inside of it and there's like five different color schemes for it. And you could go into like a different suit. There's like Miles Morales 2099 suit, which looks so dope. It's like this, the, like the, like the Spider-Man like legs normal. He has like this hoodie and it goes up to like his nose. And then he has like, like the cool, like neon eyes and stuff like that. Like there's so much customization. I was rocking like this blue and 
uh, it was like this purple and green and bluish one for like the prowler color scheme there are so many different color customizations we are going to be you know customizing this game forever and there's so much more in the game i would not be surprised if there's just you know a hundred or more than a hundred different suit variations by the end of all this because there's just so many different colors and customizations yeah i saw that uh in, in one of the demo footages that we're about to show there's a spider-man with cargo pants kind of looks like he's wearing falcon's uh wing pack and it's yeah and it gives him i guess the ability to peter parker i'm assuming uh the ability to fly as well as miles morales where he has like these wings that come out and they kind of go back in it's it was a interesting costume design for spider-man 2 because I, I was trying to think like which version of spider-man is this and there probably is yeah. something in the comics or something i miss but it looked oh definitely amazing yeah, and 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 that's the thing. Like, I I I really didn't get too much into because uh, there wasn't a lot of different options for us in this. But like the the tech options for the suits, there are so much customizations to the suit techs and the gadgets that you could use. Because uh, one, there's uh, what's different in the first game where you hold R one, you get the gadget wheel that pops up, and then you could just kind of use the right stick to choose whatever. Um, you know, whatever gadget you want. This time around, there's abilities and there's the gadgets. So you hold R1 and you could basically hit triangle, circle, square, or X to uh, choose one of the gadgets. And then if you hold L1, you get an, your abilities, which if you have the symbiote suit on, uh, you have like, you know, this giant crushing punch with the symbiote suit. You get this lunge, you get this one where you grab everyone together. There's some really cool abilities. And then on Miles' side, of course, you get the electricity powers. You get the, the ones that we've seen in the first game, but really honed in and really just really cool. Like this game is taking full potential of the PS5. It looks stunning. It looks really, really stunning. A lot of people haven't played this game in five years or even like three years. So the transition period going into it, even for me, as not like the the most uh, applicable gamer in in the sense of that name, is it as user friendly as the first one? Do you feel like there's this is just there's so much more that it gets a little bit more complicated? Do you find that the 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 skill trees for these characters have grown astronomical to the point where you're just like I'm so excited to play all these things. I don't know if I can use all these uh, new techniques. No, that's a great question. I'm glad you added. This game is is as accessible as I think as you want it to be, because obviously there's different uh, accessibility modes, which they, they didn't talk too much about, but there's a lot of different accessibility features in the game. You could go right into it and just, you know, if you just want to swing normally, just hold uh, right trigger and you could do your thing. But this game will give you those prompts. It will teach you these things. And I never felt overwhelmed by what it was teaching me. Um, if anything, uh, it felt a lot more just like, hey, we're giving you this, you know, this hand holding back into it so you could go be the ultimate spider-man after this so you felt like the the skills that they were giving you you were utilizing as well because a lot of times you get all these things and maybe you only use certain they like i like this these two things and i'll just stick with it do you feel like okay all this new arsenal that i have in my hand I want to use every single one and the game is encouraging me to use it. Yeah, no, it, it does. Like, I think you, you're rewarded for that because there's a lot of new ways that the game will throw enemies at you. Enemies are a lot tougher this time around. Um, that's, uh, or not just tougher, but there's a lot more, uh, varied. So you'll have people that will come in that could be parried. There's a parry mechanic now, which is really nice. There are uh, people that will be like on rooftops trying to snipe you. There's different drones uh, for Craven's crew. So there's a lot of different um, variations to the enemies. So you're going to want to use those abilities, use those skills. And it feels very, um, I feel it feels like adequate to the experience. So I think uh, if you haven't touched Spider-Man since 2018, I think there'll be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think going into it, you'll you'll be more than okay because the game has a lot of options to help you out there. Um, Shay, you had uh, we had a lot of questions that were thrown into the mix. Do you want to throw some questions? We'll see if we can answer them before we you know continue on. Absolutely, I feel like a lot of these questions. What's great about them is they will continue to incite more conversation and more questions, yes. even from from uh, Anthony and myself. Some of them have already been kind of answered, but I am curious. We have one over here from uh, Dion, aka at. E Gorgian Boist, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your handle, but 
And this is something that I'm actually curious about too. I'm not sure if you had a chance to do this, but can you switch between the symbiote suit and the normal suit at any time, even in the story? Because I'm assuming in the story, the, that symbiote suit is, is obviously very relevant and, and purposeful. Can you switch between that suit? Were you able to even try that out? So I could just switch between uh, the suits in my, like I just open up the menu and choose a different suit and I was able to do that. I know like, I wonder if they're thinking like a web of shadows, you could just hit R3 and you just kind of go and you have those symbiote suit on. Yeah, I did not come across that in my experience again that could just be me there's a lot of different previews coming out today so if someone else was able to do that i was just able to swap my suits and do it that way so that's did that's the, kind of how i experienced and, it and did the gameplay change or did the the story and obviously because the symbiote suit is giving peter so much rage but if he's wearing like a right. clown spider-man suit for example for example <laughs> does that does it change anything does he still super angry i think i still had the uh, i'll be uh, oh god I'm, I'm trying to think now i feel like i still had the the symbiote abilities even though i wasn't wearing the the curious. symbiote suit i'm no just way. quickly going through the that's very how do you, that, that, that's how do you get the symbiote apart or is, yeah. is the symbiote masking the suit like is it like okay i'll create the suit you want but underneath it i'm maybe still, that'd be cool like if they had the costume design of all of and this might yeah. be a lot of work all of peter's you know, Spider-Man costumes, but they all like have a like a symbiote version of them. Version of it. That'd yeah, be, I remember there being like uh, there. I remember there being like a not not a leak, but like a, a rumor that that would be the case back in the day. Um, but yeah, I didn't not in my experience of what I was playing with. But again, there might be an answer to that. You know, out there today. So please, if you uh, if you come across it, let us know because I'm curious too. Now, I'm curious. Yes. Uh, some of the other questions. Uh, a lot of them are also brought up during your uh, conversation with Jacinda. But I'm curious, maybe from your point, because you had a chance to play it. Do you feel like the side content has improved in this game? Because people, a lot of people, I think, felt with the first game that it was great, but you were getting the same uh, stolen cars, people robbing, things like that. Like where the, the the average crimes were occurring. Do you feel like that content has improved? So from what I I, I came across, some crimes like in pro while I was playing and yeah there was you know stolen car I believe was one of them uh there was a robbery happening so those are familiar ones that we've had but Jacinda said you know in our interview and, and like you mentioned there's a lot of side content in this game and she encourages us all she's like literally that was a lot one of the last she things she said to me it. she's like listen go explore go do the side content there's a lot there and you'll notice from the video today from the state of play that there is you know it looked like a Mysterio symbol. So I'm like, a symbol. So I'm like, is Mysterio in the game? Like, is there is there something going on with Mysterio that's happening behind the scenes? There's a billboard that said like Mysterio in like Emporium, uh, or Myst mysterious Emporium or something like that. So like, there's little hints to the larger you know Marvel universe out there and the other Spider-Man characters. So definitely side content from what Jacinda tells us is going to be major. So we're going to want to you you're going to want to make sure you see all of it. She was Love she it. was a, kind of alluding to the dynamics of like a Red Dead Redemption to uh in like where you would get into these scenarios where you just were unexpected. I felt like that's what she was leading on to the where these other side things that you kind of will see they naturally passing, occur. They'll just right. naturally occur rather than oh there's a how many times can New York be robbed in a day, right? Well, I mean, let's, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, 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 but but it's true. There was there was definitely a natural feeling to everything that I was seeing, and this game is going to want to make you go in every single direction. Um, I there's going to be a lot more collectibles, I think, because when you go to the collection screen, there's like the photo ops, and then there's uh, collectibles. And the collectibles were these spider bots, like I was mentioning, and there was like different, you know, something going on with these spider bots in the spider multiverse out there, the spider verse. Um, so I feel like there's going to be a lot more to connect, uh, collect, especially between Peter and Miles. I feel like they'll have separate opportunities. Um, what's cool with taking photos now? Uh, you just swipe up on the on the the trackpad. Oh, what's it called on the Dual Sense? The touchpad. The, the touchpad. Yeah, you swipe you swipe up on it. And it's uh, and you go to camera mode, and the the camera ops are kind of like bigger now, so you could take more pictures, and uh, Miles could take pictures too, which is great. I don't remember if Miles could take. I don't think Miles could take pictures in in Miles Morales. I don't. I, I, don't I feel remember. like he couldn't. He had a um, he had a smartphone. He could. Do he had it. a smartphone, but this the, the app comes back though. So the the app nice. that Miles had is great, and there's a really cool moment that we played where it's like uh, um, Harry calls Miles, and he's like, "Hey, man, like." do you need help with anything? And Miles is like, 
nah, yeah, fam, sure. Well, what's up? Um, so it's like it's interesting seeing where they're going with Harry with this. And I know uh, uh, we have more questions, but I want to quickly also say I saw zero venom. In that was one any of the questions. Of the, so the venom. Uh, who who asked it so we could give them credit for asking as well? Carl Davidson, aka at Carl eight four five six two one two zero zero. That hopefully that's not your phone number or your sin number. <laughs> uh, but have you played any parts with Venom in it? Zero Venom. We have not seen Venom at all in any of the gameplay and any of there the B roll that we have on Venom screen. Venom is not in the game. Venom is not in the game. <laughs> but he does Imagine. have lips. Go check out our interview he to hear about lips. that. He does have lips. But uh, yeah, zero Venom. Only symbiote. Pi- uh, oh. <laughs> symbiote Peter, uh, <laughs> symbiote Peter Parker, uh, but that is that is it for, uh, for in terms of just the symbiote itself. No venom. Interesting. It's nice. Okay. It's nice to yeah. see that you could start to piece the story now. I think with the first trailer, you were just wondering, okay, so it's Craven and or sorry for the very first trailer, there was Venom and there was Miles and all that, and then we got Craven. But now you you understand where this the plot is going. It's like okay, he Craven came for Spider Man, but now he eventually became or. Maybe he didn't know he has a symbiote suit on. So now it's even a, a more of an ambitious hunt for him. And there was all yeah. these dynamics. And who knows what other characters show up. And I think that was another question. Um, was there I any? Feel like, I feel like Craven came for, for, for Doc Ock. Sorry, for Lizard, though. I think he came for Lizard. I don't think he came for Spider-Man. He didn't come for – you don't think so? You think he, it was the Lizard no, that was – I think he came for the Lizard. Which makes sense, too. Kurt I feel Connors. like he came for – Maybe both. Maybe that's maybe. Yeah, but um, uh, we did. I did fight the lizard. Lizard did show up. Lizard, lizard was a uh, lizard looks amazing. He's definitely a little bit more roided out because of something that Craven has done to him. Um, but it was a awesome fight. Like you literally are just getting dragged through the city. You're fighting up the walls. It is a really wicked fight. Again, I'm going to throw some footage of that up as we talk about it. But the lizard fight was really really cool. You could tell that Peter just has such a love for Kurt Connors. Um, and then that actually the, that scene that we got in the PlayStation showcase earlier this year um, where Peter is there and he kind of comes out with the symbiote suit. Um, we go into Kurt Connors house and then you do that that scene where you're you leave the house, you fight all of Craven's guys. You do the I did the foot the on like the like stomp on the guy's chest. Um, really, really cool moment. But yeah, Anthony, you had something to ask. The the Kurt Connors uh, storyline and, and his his character is very unique to Spider-Man. I think. He plays a, a part of Peter's kind of like substitute dad. Yeah, definitely. It was funny to see him as symbiote Spider-Man trying to get this serum for him because he's all like during this scene, he's actually really, really angry. Trying he's to grab super this, angry. This serum. Yeah. He's like, I need to save you, Kurt. Kurt. And yeah. He's like, <laughs> but he, he has like this anger in, with him. And it's just like, yeah. it's so funny to have these dynamics where you can see his personality has changed it drastically. Re- it yeah. reminded me of like when you're trying to give like your dog some medicine. You're like, Jesus, I want to save your life. Jesus, exactly. open your mouth. Exactly. Save you. Take it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so good. And then uh, uh, with the symbiote suit on, there is something called symbiote rage, which is basically like Spartan rage. You hit R- L3 and R3 and Peter just goes sicko mode. Like he just goes crazy. Like activate instant kill. He's just taking fools out. It is spectacular. It is so fun. And you even see Peter's eyes because things get like a little shaky. You see like Peter's eyes go like like more venom looking, like the white, like the like like the thumbnail of this video. It's really, really cool. Awesome. We've got we've got a few more here. Some really good ones. Yeah, blame on it. We have uh do the visuals and graphics look similar to the in engine 2021 trailer uh i think basically what people are trying to know is how are the puddles puddles <laughs> puddles were there i did see some puddles uh again i played in fidelity mode so it looked really really cool um i did not play at night which is i think another question that somebody may have asked mm-hmm. uh do we play at night at all but jacinda said that they're really proud of how they made the city look at night because in the first game things looked a little bluish but I think with the power of the PS5, uh, they made the night scenes probably pop a lot more and look a lot more rich. Um, and that is something specifically that she called out in our interview. So please go watch that. Go listen to that because she called out that they're really proud of how they made night look in New York City. I was reviewing the footage and I I just the first thing that comes to mind is like I've never even though we've seen New York, we've seen this in previous Spider-Man games with Miles and, and the one that came the first one. It looks next gen. Like this game, just the motion flow looks ne- next gen. The buildings look, the city. There's like 
There's Tons people in the building. Cars. There's just so swinging. it's so dense. It's so dense. This, I again, it's wild to see that the camera movement. Like I was, I really, I, I maybe I just don't remember, but the camera movement looks so different. It has like this motion to it, and it goes in, and then it goes out, and it comes around, and it comes. It's just, it's things that I again haven't experienced on my new PS5, and I, I hope to get yeah. this next gen feeling because I've been waiting so patiently for something next year yeah no it looks incredible the fluidity in the in the web swinging and just the density of the cars again the fidelity mode is, is wild there's so many people on the streets i hi you could high five people still miles still has his like little dance that Swagger. he does when you when you when you tap uh when you tap square um but yeah there's there's so much density in the world and like people in the buildings uh you really feel like new york's lived in this time around it feels like a city that you could interact with a lot more That's especially amazing. that the you trees. have queens and you have brooklyn yeah everything looks incredible yeah. um and as you're swinging on the water so that was another thing like when you went into the water before you kind of would just drop in and you could jump out now you could actually skid on the water and then jump out of it and then go into web wings so you could literally traverse over water so much easier this time around too which is really cool amazing uh, sorry, that question also was from at Yo Flamingo. They're also asking, how do the haptic, how does the haptic feedback feel and the triggers? I know that you were talking to me about something that was really cool that I think we will probably put a video or a clip of it here. You were describing the the triggers and how you're pressing them. Yeah, so there there is a sequence in the game where you are in this collider and you're trying to, I guess, stabilize the collider. And this little like uh, mini game pops up where you have to press and hold the left trigger and the right trigger at different spots almost like do you guys remember in the arkham games with the cryptic like uh yes thing where you, the cryptic the cryptographer, uh, whatever it's called the cri yeah. cryptographer where you have to put the, th the thumbsticks in a certain direction you have to do that but you have to do it with the triggers and it's so weird because you're just like you feel the pressure of them so you're pressing down and you're holding them in a certain direction you kind of have to balance it in a certain way again we'll throw footage of that in the b-roll here um but it's really really cool uh, to see how that looks and to how that feels. And again, it's just another layer of interaction with these little, you know, quick time ish events. Um, I also played a couple different uh, of these mini games where, you know, we know the games where you have to, you know, complete the current or do these things. But uh, there's this one where you had to like, you know, break down the cellular form and like you, you spin like this big DNA around uh, again, very reminiscent of the first two games. But like, again, there's a new kind of variation on it this time around too, which was, uh, which was really fun to try, uh, try uh, play around with. At David Thompson, uh, do Peter and Miles feel and play differently when swinging or fighting? Yeah, they do hundred percent. I mean, fighting, especially, I mean, their fighting is completely different they have different abilities. They have different ways of swinging. Uh, Miles still swings very differently than Peter. They're both very, very fast. They both have web wings, which is great. Um, but yeah, they they definitely feel differently from one another. They they fight extremely differently, especially with the abilities. But there's a lot of, you know, like if you could play as Peter, you could play as Miles, obviously, because they have very similar. They, they feel like that on a base level that they're the same, but they are very different in terms of animations, the way they move. Um, one thing I love that they added is that you could put a web line anywhere. So you could literally just like be um, doing a stealth mission in which I was doing where you were kind of going where Kurt Connors was being held. And you see this in the showcase footage where you're just on a web line and you look to a different direction. You could throw a web line there, do a web line there, and you could have like a whole web that you start walking across. So it makes your stealth even easier which is nice because i think stealth is where the first game you know it was fun but there's a lot more i think to it this time around with being able to have those web lines and coming down from them and all of that that um that nighttime question also was from spider menace 125 one of the things thank that you, you spider menace spider menace one of the questions that you brought up so not questions but one of the things that you brought up to me was this sequence with like this spider robot and you were talking to me about how they're not like the MJ missions or anything like that where it's an instant fail. There's like a lot more complexity to them. Do you mind talking about that? Yeah, so there's a there's the spider bot that Miles was controlling. And, you know, we had these little spider bot missions in the first game where the spider bot could fly um, for a limited time and then you could kind of go through and you were he was trying to, you know, turn on the... He was trying to hack the security system to get back in the building. And I got seen at one point and they tried to shoot me, but I kind of hid. So they started searching for the spider bot and as I hid, they were like, oh, we can't find him. And then I was able to like do whatever I needed to do and then take them down, which is really fun. Um, one thing that I th a lot of people have been asking for is fall damage. So you go to the highest building in New York City, 
you jump off of it and you fall down. You will get fall damage. You could turn that on and off in the settings. So it's a setting. So if you don't want to get fall damage, if you want to feel like you could just swing and make mistakes, that option is there to turn it off. But if you want to have that feeling like you did in Spider-Man 2, in Web of Shadows, in the previous Spider-Man game, where if you fall from a high height and you don't catch yourself, you'll injure yourself or you could die. And it's it's interesting. And I like that Insomniac added that because that is such a specific fan thing. Um, but it was really cool that they actually, you know, took the time to think about it and include it and put it in the menus. Um, I think that was it for questions, right, Shabazz? I think, was there anything else? I have a, I have a question for you, That's Daniel. all we have. Oh. Nope, nope, that's it. Last one. Uh, <laughs> that's it for today. We got, we got, no. Daniel sums up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, Anthony, please ask with, away. With everything that you learned and everything that you played, do you think Miles gets the symbiote suit? Oh man, that's a great question. I I don't from what I feel where the story is going right now. Again, I played a couple hours in. I feel like there is going to have to be some moment where Peter is cuz Peter Yuri Lowenthal is killing it as Peter by the way. He is phenomenal, great performance. You hear the rage in his voice and I feel like there's going to be a moment where he has to fight Peter. And, you know, has to try and get the symbiote off of Peter. And then they're going to have to fight Venom, whoever it attaches to afterwards. But Miles Venom would be a very interesting take as well, too. And one that, you know, could play on him being a younger Spider-Man, maybe being a little bit more inexperienced and, you know, having that jealousy of Peter. I mean, there's a lot of different places Insomniac could take it. And that'd be really interesting, too, you know, like and I think we're in a place right now where, where multiverses are, where we understand that, oh, this is this universe's take on these characters. And, you know, this is a different universe's take on these characters. So the days of it being like, oh, they totally butchered that. It was like, yeah, they didn't. This is just their, you know, version of it, which I think is really cool, too. Because I always think of the, the symbiote suit to be kind of like you, you've you been possessed. You're like, this is the exorcist. Yeah. And it moves from one person to another. So why not take Miles? He is younger. He is more impressionable. He's easier to control. And, you know kid he's a young adult or maybe an i guess he's a 20 year old they usually have a little bit more anger in them so it kind of feeds off that like that would be a, a interesting twist during the the end of this game where maybe he play, he becomes this version of venom that we haven't seen I, I don't think i've seen it in the comics i definitely haven't seen it in movies or in the animation work so yeah so i mean there's a possibility but i think that's what this this game does so well i was about to call it a movie is these character moments. And I was just sitting there watching a scene with Miles and Rio, his mom, just talking about life and talking about, you know, that he wants to take, you know, he wants to find, you know, Dr. Lee, who obviously was Mr. Negative in the first game because he was responsible for killing Miles' dad. And like this game just does so well with those small character moments. And again, I just commend the team at Insomniac for telling amazing stories, stories that you just want to get lost in because there's just so much to it. And I think that's what's going to be what keeps people coming back to replaying the story are the characters are these moments. And if you couldn't tell already that I think Spider-Man two is going to be one of the coolest games you'll ever play. And right now my, my tier list, you know, for greatest superhero games of all time, obviously Spider-Man and Miles Morales is up there. Arkham Knight, you know, the mechanics of that um, Spider-Man two blew that out of the water for me in terms of traversal, in terms of being able to web swing, to to wing glide, and to do all of that and feel so fluid in your movements. It is coming for the title of greatest superhero game of all time, and I welcome that because, damn, does Insomniac put out incredible games. And as I told Jacinda in our interview, I cannot wait to see what they do with Wolverine because I can only imagine what they're going to be able to pull off with that character. But that's that's... It for me, I mean, there's so much more that we could talk about. I'm sure we're going to be talking about this game again. If there's if there's anything else that I think of or that I, I come across, this is where you need to follow us on socials, on Instagram, on TikTok. We have videos that we'll be putting up all throughout the week, all leading up to the release on October 20th on PS5. Um, of all of these different experiences that we have, we have so much footage, so much to talk about. So make sure you tune in for everything that we have going on here in the movie podcast, whether you're watching this on YouTube, if you're subscribed to us on any podcast feed, leave a comment, leave a review. It goes a long way for us. Again, I want to say thank you to our friends 
at PlayStation Canada and Insomniac Games for inviting us out to go experience uh, Spider-Man 2 on PS5. I am still just blown away by the opportunity. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I have absolutely loved what I've played so far. If I have not spoken the last hour without letting you know, I am in love with what this game is doing. And I just know once we get our hands on it, it's going to take over all of our lives like the symbiote does. It is going to take us over and I will willingly give myself up to it because it is just incredible. Uh, again, thank you to PlayStation. Thank you, Insomniac, to Marvel Games. There is some incredible stuff coming your way and we want to make sure you watching this or you listening to this. We hope that you're here for all of it. Thank you to everyone who wrote in their questions. I'm sure there's going to be more questions coming in soon. Um, if we need to do a part two of this, we will. So stay tuned. We have lots of incredible interviews out from Tiff, from you know the creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's so much to love here on the movie podcast. So if this is your first time watching us, stick around. We have so much incredible things, and we'd love for you to hang out with us. That was this time with the movie podcast, and we'll see you next.